again. My name is Jason Mercer, the Toronto Real Estate Board's Director of Market Analysis. We are through the first full month of summer and are certainly still experiencing the shift in market conditions that began in the springtime. With this in mind, let's take a closer look at TREB's residential statistics for July. Greater Toronto Area Realtors reported 5,921 residential transactions through TREB's MLS system in July 2017. This result was down by 40.4% on a year-over-year -year basis, led by the detached market segment, both in the City of Toronto and the surrounding regions. Condominium apartment sales in the City of Toronto experienced the smallest drop compared to July 2016, but they were still down by approximately 28%. While sales are down, the number of new listings reported were only slightly above last year's level, up by about 5%. This suggests that following an initial surge of listings in the spring, homeowners who may have been considering the sale of their home have taken a wait-and-see attitude. Active listings at the end of July were up strongly to more than 18,750 compared to approximately 11,300 active listings a year earlier. Thinking about the reasons underlying the dip in home sales and volatility in listings, a recent release from the Ontario government confirmed TREB's own research which found that foreign buyers represented a small proportion of overall buying activity in the GTA. Clearly this suggests that the year-over-year -year decline we experienced in July and throughout the spring had more to do with psychology, with would-be home buyers on the sidelines waiting to see how market conditions evolve. With this in mind, summer market statistics are often not the best indicators of housing market conditions. We generally see an uptick in activity following Labor Day as a greater cross-section of would-be buyers and sellers start to consider listing and or purchasing a home. As we move through the fall, we should start to get a better sense of the impacts of the fair housing plan and higher borrowing costs. So we've talked about trends in sales and listings, let's now turn to price. After all, it's the interplay between demand and supply that underpins the pace of price growth. The MLS Home Price Index Composite Benchmark Price was up by 18% on a year-over-year -year basis in July. However, the Composite Benchmark was down by 4.6% relative to June. Monthly MLS HPI declines were driven more so by single-family home types. This makes sense when we think about the fact that the greatest sales declines have been in the single-family market segments. The average selling price for all home types combined was up by 5% year-over-year to $746,218. Home buyers benefited from more choice in the market this July compared to the same time last year, especially in the single-family market segments. This was reflected in home prices and home price growth. Looking forward, if we do see some would-be home buyers move off the sidelines and back into the market without a similar increase in new listings, we could see some of this newfound choice erode. The recent changes in the sales and price trends have masked the fact that housing supply remains an issue in the Greater Toronto Area. Don't forget, the Government of Ontario, when it released its Fair Housing Plan in April, committed to looking at ways to increase the supply of housing, both ownership and rental, in the Greater Golden Horseshoe. It'll be interesting to see how things evolve from a policy perspective. With all this in mind, I look forward to speaking with you again at the beginning of September when we review the August results. Thanks very much. Brought to you by GTA Realtors.